Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 54 for Friday the 23rd of October 2015. This is the show, 23rd, no, it's the 30th of October 2015. <laughs> this is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and uh, I actually read that completely correctly, it's all screwed up in the show notes. <laughs> that's because we didn't go live last week like we should have. <laughs> but you know, that's, you know, life happens. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so last week was kind of crazy. You were, no, I was sick. You weren't sick. I was sick. And, uh, yeah. 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 You, you were, you were busy, I think. Yeah. The, I, I, think you know, you, I think you were doing life. Yeah, I know that. Oh man. If I could just stop doing life and just right? do podcast stuff, that'd be, oh my God. Well, I, I did I did a little bit of rough math, just uh, some back of the envelope math, and uh, I breathe twenty four hours a day. If I could find a way not to breathe, I would have so much more time in the day. Holy shit, you ain't lying, man. <laughs> at least, hey, I, I figured out a way to multitask though. I can I can breathe and do other things at the same time. Well, so here's here's the concept that I, I thoroughly enjoy every time it comes to mind. If I mention breathing. And then tell you that right now you are consciously breathing, automatically you begin consciously breathing. <laughs> like it's it's not something you can actually turn off, but then you have to forget to breathe in order to breathe naturally. <laughs> like <laughs> Actually I know quite a bit about this because when when we're doing karate, when we're doing katas, we have to remember to breathe. And that's seems like such a weird concept when you first think about it, but oh my god. Like it's, it is such a, <laughs> it, yeah. Oh my God. It's such a thing. So, anyway. so yeah, like right now I'm thinking about it and I can't not think about it because <laughs> I'm thinking about it. And of course there's that fear that, Hey, if I stop thinking about breathing, I'm not going to breathe and I'm going to die. So then I keep, it keeps on my mind. Like these are the things that keep me up at night that, yeah. <laughs> that shouldn't, they really shouldn't. <laughs> then miraculously, once you fall asleep, everything's okay. Well, I've never had to think about it for more than just a few seconds. So we should just go ahead and move on to the next subject. <laughs> so, all right. So you were sick last week. Mm -hmm. And I had just finished. Well, basically what it was is uh, we had this huge project in the last week of which all we did all week long was rehearse it. Verbally rehearse it over and over and over again. And while it went well, like um, overall it went well, I would, still wouldn't call it a win. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, I, I forget who I sent it to, but it was kind of like uh, kind of like the teacher saying, "Yeah, build a volcano," and we built the most awesomest volcano ever. And then the principal came along and said, "No, you were supposed to make a battery out of lemons." Oh, you shit. know what I mean? It was like one of those things. Like we really excelled at what we thought we were supposed to be doing. It 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 didn't quite hit the mark. So you know, whatever. Mm. Um. But yeah, all that rehearsing and then the change in weather going from 90 degrees last week to, uh, well, it was like 50s and then 90s and then now it's in the 30s. So my voice and my lungs and my throat and everything else just couldn't take it. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. So okay. that's, what, that's what happened with me. So, what, so what, what's been going on since? I'm assuming things got better. Um, preparing for an exercise. We're doing an exercise next week. So that's all oh. we've been doing is preparing for the exercise. Oh, so you're in Korea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember those days. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, all right. So I'm still not fully up and running at work, so I've got some downtime. And <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to actually do productive things. And one of the things that I, I decided that it was a really good time to do was update my will and powers of attorney and fix all my beneficiaries for insurance and stuff like that. And um, it got me thinking, man, that's really, really, really fucking important for everybody to do. Yeah. Even, even if you don't have access to like, uh, you know, free attorneys like we do in the military, <laughs> if you, if you at least. Free, okay. Free limited attorneys. Let's not. Let's well, not right, 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 <laughs> well, right, right, right. But, but to have a will prepared, just a will prepared, hmm. a lot of people outside of the military, you're going to pay like a hundred bucks just to have a will made. Yeah. It's a really big, huge benefit that we have. Um, but, but if you don't have the, the means or the, the time or the money or whatever to, to get a will made, 
at the very least, write down what what your wishes are, your your po- your post mortem wishes are, because th- there are laws in place that for if you're married, for example, your spouse will just inherit everything and automatically be your executor and automatically be like all of these things that you're probably going to put in your will anyway. But there's certain things like you know, hey, I want. I want my buddy to have uh, my comic book collection, or I want to be buried in this My Little Pony t-shirt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you just write these things down, it helps whoever ends up taking care of your your stuff, your spouse, and in most cases for married people, it helps them out. It takes away that burden of making a decision for a lot of things. Right. So even if you don't have the time or inclination or the money or whatever to get a will made write down your wishes and put it somewhere where your, your significant other knows where it's at. Uh, but if you do have the time, the will, the inclination and the money or the means or whatever do take care of your will, make sure it's up to date powers of attorney, uh, for medical stuff for, you know, for whatever. Um, it's really important. Just thought I'd pass that on because it's. <laughs> and this has been a public service announcement brought to you by <laughs> Ritual Misery. RMP PSAs. <laughs> there you go. The RMP PSAs. <laughs> get that. Get get that. Uh, get that hashtag going. All right. Yeah, right. Um, so. Uh, so my geeky thing of the week this week, I actually converted finally all of the improv videos over to YouTube. Um, finally got the process down enough that I could let it go without sitting there want, watching it, wondering if it was actually going to convert or fail or whatever, and got them all up, got them shared out with the other people in the group. And, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of good responses from that. They're, they're still not public yet because uh, I want to make sure that mo- the, at least the majority of the players are okay with them going public. Sometimes there are some off color jokes and things like that, you know, I mean, it's, sure, it's an sure. adult improv group. So, um, but yeah, that, that was uh that was a big thing. That was one of the many things on my task list to do. And it was one of those things where I was constantly trying to battle with formats. And it, basically it comes down to this. If you are, if you're using a GoPro and you export to the YouTube format, then upload to YouTube, YouTube doesn't like it. It says, no, screw you. Mm. So I, yeah, did everything up to, uh, 720p and then put it up there hmm yeah that's interesting that it just kind of doesn't like it yeah it's, that's uh, it, it'll upload well, it fine but then it'll sit there and process at 95 percent for i don't know two or three days oh geez yeah and and what's the what's the output format um honestly i don't even know it's I, i'm not sure yeah you might have better luck if you if you do a conversion well, I just I just exported it to 720p dot mov yeah. and it works fine. Huh. It uploads mm. fine, looks fine. Like there's no fucking point in doing it the other way. Yeah, it's not huh. like it's a Final Cut Pro where it's going to upload to YouTube for me. Apparently, Premiere does it too, but I haven't I haven't played with Premiere too much. So, huh. interesting. Yeah. Well, my geeky thing of the week. So last week, last. Saturday went to a Halloween party that was hosted by my uh, my karate dojo, and a bunch of us guys decided that we were going to go as DC Comics villains. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was the Joker. Mm. So you didn't Every- have to dress up at all. <laughs> Not for personality, but for for yeah. Anyway, so that was a bad joke, and it fell miserably. <laughs> Anyway, um, it really did. Thanks for thanks for. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! So anyway, everyone was expecting me to dress up in the you know the purple suit, the classic, what you think of as the Joker, right? Well, the, I decided the 1960s instead, Joker. Sure, or Jack Nicholson, or you know, or whatever. Uh, so what I did instead was, I I got a uh, an orange prison jumpsuit in a straight jacket and I painted my face all up like the Joker did uh, green shit in my hair and uh, looked pretty crazy. And I showed up 
basically in chains and, and looking all all crazy and psycho and it was a pretty big hit and uh, I, th- I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, not not only was it it cool to get all of us together dressed up like these villains, but to to surprise the guys. They knew I was coming as the Joker, but they didn't know I was going to do that. And uh, that was that was pretty cool. <laughs> Mama Collins in the chat says Pixar didn't happen. So, yeah, I was actually thinking about that for our our YouTube cover photo yeah. or what. I was thinking about doing a little Photoshop thing and replacing my face with, with uh, a picture of me as the Joker for nice. this episode. So I think um, I'm going to do so, so this is a good, a good way to segue into the diamond club TV format. Uh, what you, if you're watching the video stream, if you're watching this or if you're watching on YouTube later, what you see is a, a work in a lot of progress. So, <laughs> um, still, well, hey, we're still in beta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but, uh, the next step once, we, now that we've got this working and I'm not having the audio issues we had last time, the next step, uh, the next incarnation of this will have a window, uh, it was supposed to have it this time, but it'll have a window so where I can actually pop things like this up and we can keep going. Um, fully third, third, uh, third client serviceable, if you will. <laughs> uh, we're getting there. We're <laughs> getting there. Actually, you know what? Um, didn't you send me that pic? I, I sent you one or two, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so you didn't, you didn't get the final product though. What what I sent you was the makeup test from the day before. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. So what I looked like Saturday was a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Um, let's see if I can grab this and open it and share it up. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to cut into the chat room space here. But uh, there's 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 a picture of it right there. <laughs> so that was that was the beta version. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was the beta. We'll, we'll get uh, we'll get the the official one later. <laughs> so very cool, very cool. All right, um, it is uh, <laughs> why so beta? <laughs> <laughs> uh, until we <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and get into this then. Diamond Club. Oh, nope, not that. This. There we go. <laughs> okay, it is time for some TED Talks. Uh, why don't you start, man? Because you, you've got an interesting story to go with yours. Yeah, all right. Continuing the trend from last show. <laughs> I listened to probably about a dozen TED Talks. <laughs> couldn't find oh one. Couldn't find, <laughs> couldn't find one that just quite fit my fancy. So the last one, the last one that I listened to is the one that I'm gonna review. <laughs> okay, okay. So let me ask, ask, let me ask you a few questions about this one first. <laughs> okay. All right? okay. Um, first, is it longer than five minutes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's like 15 minutes. Oh, oh. So <laughs> does, is, does that make it better or worse? <laughs> uh, in this case, it was worse. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, tell us about uh, Cesar Harada, How I Teach Kids to Love Science. Uh, okay. I was expecting a really inspirational, like, oh, man, this is this is why science is so cool and this is how I can inspire the people to be excited about science and, and get inspired myself about science. And I almost fell asleep, man. <laughs> I was I was watching this TED talk while I was doing dishes. So I had my I had my iPhone sitting up on the on the little sill that I have above my sink. <sighs> yeah, man. I was sitting there watching dishes. I almost just like, you know, turned on the garbage disposal so I didn't have to hear it. <laughs> It was awful. It was awful. This guy talks about. I mean, it was kind of a cool story, sort of. Like, like it could have been a cool story. Yeah, but the dude is boring as shit. (laughs) So he's talking about. Okay. The main crux of the story is that there's plastic in the ocean. Like eighty or ninety percent of the ocean is just filled with fucking plastic from (laughs) us just throwing shit in the ocean, right? Okay. So they want to. They want to. I'm not way. sure that's exactly true, but I, okay, we'll, we'll go with the premise. We'll we'll buy it. We'll, I'm I'm in. I'm sold. Let's. Well, let's I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying 80 to 90 percent of the, the Earth's water is plastic. That's not what I'm saying. 
I'm saying that they, <laughs> there is contamination. They're going to get down to the Something. bottom of Mariana's Trench and, and just tap on it <laughs> and be like, oh, shit, this is plastic. It's not even rocks and stone. Exactly. We're, we're just no, li- he- we're just we're just living in an aquarium, man. That was, it was just one big aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> but he's basically saying that that eighty or ninety percent of of the Earth's oceans are polluted with plastic to some extent. And like what by he by number to- or by volume? By probably by maybe if you take surface area. <laughs> Because I mean, I mean, come on, seriously, volume like eighty to ninety percent of the volume of the Earth's you're, ocean. It, these are your is, numbers, man. I'm just, I'm just. Hey, they're not my that. fucking numbers. <laughs> Cesar Herrada's numbers. <laughs> okay, so basically, this guy's boring and full of shit. Got it. Yeah. So well, anyway, so he wanted to, to use these children to clean these. Clean the Earth's oceans. So, he, so, he, so he, he's boring, full of shit, and he's into child slavery. <laughs> right. Like, like, this guy sucks, man. <laughs> oh, he fucking does, man. And he doesn't even, even do a good job telling a good story. <laughs> oh, it was awful. It was awful. Nobody watch it. Nobody watch uh, it. Okay, or so. everybody watch it and, and tweet me what you thought. <laughs> At RM underscore Del Noche. Oh, man. That's... <laughs> Hopefully you watched a better one. That's gnarly. Um, I did. I did. Uh, Lori Faith Krenner, uh, what's wrong with your password? And of course, it's got password, you know, all jacked up with the dollar signs and the O or zero or whatever it is. Um, right. In a nutshell, she's a, I believe, a Stanford um, uh, a pr- professor. I thought and you were going to say prison experiment. I, You know, I, like I... <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes the the thoughts cross sideways, um, and her and her students went on a a journey of sorts in order to find out how the best passwords would be going with security and uh, well security as in decipherability and crackability and uh, how how easy they are to remember and ways in which you could you know have multiple passwords for multiple sites, but be able to remember them all. And just kind of a, a, a shallow, but comprehensive look at passwords and password usage. And I'm not even going to try to get into the technicalities of it, but there's some very good points made. And it made me rethink how I use my passwords. Cause I'm kind of a, I've got like five passwords for 5 million sites. Um, right. the, the most unique passwords I have are the ones that Safari uh, suggests. And I just let Safari remember them because I'm never going to. Right. So if if I ever lose my iCloud account, I'm I'm toast. I'm done. I'm yeah. So no no more post- posting in the uh, RAM forms for me. So uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's it was an interesting look at how passwords have evolved and the thought process behind them and how they're cracked and hashed and salted and all that stuff, without getting too technical or too too much into the weeds of shit so right yeah I, see I, I, would, I would actually recommend it yeah I, i'm i'm actually interested in, in listening to that one uh, you know with when it comes to passwords I'm, I'm a lot like you where i've got only a handful of passwords well i've got a handful probably three or four basic passwords and then many different modified versions of it you know adding yeah. something to it or changing a yeah. character or something like that and a lot of that has to do with the requirements of the particular site. Like I might have a standard password that I want to use for this site, but Oh, they require two special characters or this, this site requires a 16 character password yep. or whatever, you know, so I have to add more and, stuff. And, and it actually, she actually gets into a lot of those thought processes behind it, behind why mm-hmm. they require certain things and what if they don't require it? And what if you're, given the opportunity to have any password you want without any requirements, you know, it, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. And what I'm really looking forward to is a day when we don't have to have 7,000 passwords. I started this new job right about, I think, I, I think this was my fourth week. And just since I started my new job, I have created, I think eight new passwords. Wow. Wow. Add that to, I mean, if you take into account every 
site that I have or site or whatever that I have to have a password for that I have to maintain access to. I probably have, I don't know, 60 or 60, 80, a hundred different passwords. Hmm. That's ridiculous. Now the, uh, for instance, the password we use for all of our ritual misery stuff, uh, it, it's a, it's a fairly basic password. Um, and we use a variation of that same password for all the ritual misery stuff, just so that me and you can both have it. Mm-hmm. And I know of, I think six variations of that same password. Yeah. Yeah. Probably you know? about that. And mm-hmm. yeah. And it's, it's all done by necessity. So it's, yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. Passwords suck. Passwords yeah. suck. Eventually Absolutely. we won't need them. They'll be able to just like chip us or something, or I don't know, <laughs> I'll, I'll be able to swallow a turd or something and just, Never have to remember the password. <laughs> uh, All right, well, you're gonna be you're gonna be the first one to tr- to test that. Yeah, well, I've been in the military over 20 years. It won't be anything new. <laughs> so, yeah, have true. you eaten at the chow halls? Um, all right. So, uh, so it is the it's Halloween for me. It's it's uh it's Samhain for me. Um, it's the day before for you. Yes, for uh, another hour and a half, about. Right. Right. Um, we had an interesting suggestion by Mama Collins in the uh, in the chat room. She sent us a link to a list of horror movies from Reddit. The top oh. horror movies. Reddit. So uh, she was asking specifically, how many of these have we seen? So I figured it would be appropriate for us to go down the list a little bit and share uh, maybe a few few of our favorites. And okay. <laughs> the the very important part of this, how many of these stand up to the test of time? Because a lot of these Ooh. are older. Yes, yes. And, I, okay. And, and not only uh, – I'll take uh, – uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hellraiser, number 11. Hellraiser, 1987. When it came out, that movie was amazingly frightening, and it was like top notch. Like I, that was that was the scariest thing ever at the time. Now, granted, I was ten, but um, I watched that just recently, and I didn't enjoy it at all. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I I, I, I recently. It, Go ahead. You know, it, it, it didn't hold up in quality of movie or in horror factor. It, neither one of them for me. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I watched recently Children of the Corn. That movie came out in probably, what, early 80s? Um, Like 82 or something like that. I find it in here, if it's even Yeah. Here. Well, I remember when that movie came out. Granted, I was a kid. And when I saw it the first time, I was fairly young, 11 or 12, probably Mm -hmm. scared the shit out of me. (laughs) I I didn't, you know, growing up in Oxford, Indiana, 1984 is when it came out. (laughs) Thank thank you, movie man, Lucas. Surrounded by corn in Indiana. I didn't even want to go outside my fucking house after I saw that movie. (laughs) So I watched it with Stephanie, my girlfriend, Stephanie, uh, geez, what, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, probably. And she'd never seen it before. (laughs) Yeah. That movie does not hold up. It is not (laughs) scary. It is goofy. It's just, it (sighs) goofy. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it's goofy. It's goofy. There you go. There's the official, the official summary. So, um, here we go. Number one is the shining. Great movie. Actually, you know, I've never seen that in my adult life. Oh, it's yeah. good. Yeah, I, it's, I remember it's more, watching most of it when I was when I was younger, but I've never seen it in my adult life. It's more psychological thriller, I think, right. than horror. But it's de- there's definitely a strong horror element. Um, the Thing by John Carpenter. I don't think I saw that one. I don't think so either. See, this this shows how bad we are, how awful we are. I know. Movie <laughs> um, Halloween. Uh, that one. Uh, Halloween. So here's the thing about Halloween. I've never actually seen the movie, but I've read the book. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I, I just rewatched it 
actually more recently than Children of the Corn. I it's probably like the jeez, I don't even know, eighth or ninth time that I've seen that movie. Th- this was the uh the first the first horror mo- book that I ever ever read. Someone had it in like I think third grade or something like that, and it had the word breast in it. <laughs> so I acquired it for I think a I think a dollar, and then like you know it, it was like whatever, and then maybe three years later we were moving and I found it again because it had been thrown in the back of the closet, and during that move I read it because we didn't have cable or anything else set up, and uh, yeah, uh, that that, <laughs> that book actually scared me a little bit. Where it took me another ten years before I read a Stephen King book. Oh wow, <laughs> you know or that. Uh, six years or whatever yeah How, halloween holds up better than most older horror movies i think mm. it didn't it didn't scare me really this this most recent viewing mm-hmm. uh there i mean there was some jump out moments um there was some i guess uh frightening like oh my god like the uh like the anticipatory anticipatory fear yeah you know where you're like or like a sense of dread i guess because you know you know he's out there you know he's coming Mm -hmm. and it's like a nervousness like like oh my god no matter how far how fast you run or how slowly he gimps behind you he'll always be (laughs) in the corner yeah yeah it but i i think overall it it holds up Um, now have have you seen the new version though the well new ish version halloween halloween or h2o or whatever no, 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 no. I'm talking about the Rob Zombie reboot. Oh, no, I have not. That is really, really good. <laughs> that one... Have you seen any of the Rob Zombie horror movies? No. Oh, son. <laughs> <laughs> they are top-notch cinema. Like, See, they are... Here's the thing, though. I, I really enjoy watching horror movies, but I don't like watching them alone because it's... To me, movies in general are a shared experience. I can sure. watch a documentary by myself, but any type of the, you know, uh, uh, cinema that is meant to be, uh, communally enjoyed, I, I need to watch with other people. And I've had a lot of people or a lot of time where I've either lived by myself or been deployed or whatever else. So, mm. yeah, I don't get to a lot of these. I just don't get to, um, now the next one on the list, alien. Yeah. Um, holds up. Pretty well. Pretty well. The, the the suspense of it and the uh uh I don't even know how to even if you watched it like five times, it still just grabs you and you can't turn away from that movie. Like you want to watch it all the way to the end. Um yeah. I watched this one as recently as what, twenty twelve when Prometheus came out. Uh I watched Alien and Aliens. Um I think that's as far as I got, just the first two. But, uh, yeah, both those movies hold up really, really well. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely do. And a lot of people, they, they think about Alien, they're like, oh, yo, that sci-fi movie. Well, yeah, it is sci-fi, but I would classify it more as horror. It's That, uh, that movie is frightening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that is a fucking monster movie. <laughs> yep. <Definitely. laughs> yeah. that, that's the movie that makes you wonder what's in the dark. Like, that yeah. movie alone. So uh, let me ask you this: what What is your favorite horror movie, or or what is your favorite couple of horror movies? Um, like currently or of all time? Give me both. I want both answers. Okay, uh, of all time, the the Elm Street movies. I the the thought of Freddy of of being trapped in your in your nightmares and being in a place that you can't control, other than uh, you know minor details or whatever um and trying to escape sleep which is something we all need and we you know we will all eventually succumb to regardless like it, there's a certain helplessness there that uh i've always enjoyed i just love love the nightmare on elm street movies yeah yeah the uh, even, okay, even, for me even the new ones even the new ones like i it just as, as long <laughs> as long as you had the original freddy I was good. Yeah, yeah. Like the now, the brand new Nightmare on Elm Street, it didn't it didn't do it for me. 
Uh, see, I didn't. I didn't watch the remake. I, uh, I want to. I wanted to watch it in the theater when it first came out, yeah. and I never. I never got around to seeing it because nobody wanted to go with me. And then, I it's. I guess it just kind of fell off my radar. I. Yeah. I need to go seek it out. Um, my my favorite more recent ish <laughs> release would be uh, Devil. Devil. I'm not familiar with that one. M Night Shyamalan. Oh, that one. Oh, yes. okay. That's the uh, trapped in an elevator. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, because it, it combines a few things of mine. One, right after I saw that movie, I got trapped in or stuck in the elevator. <laughs> no way. For for like uh, like two floors with uh, this really old lady. Everybody else bailed out, and I ended up not realizing she was in there until we went down. Um, <laughs> and she was creepy as hell looking. Uh, claustrophobia. And absolute like a uh, uh, helplessness while being watched by those that can help oh. like that that's like that's like all of my fears if you if you wrapped in up if it was an airtight uh an airtight uh, uh, uh elevator to where you added suffocation to that <laughs> yeah, that, that oh would be God. all of my fears oh my god wrapped up in one um so, so this is hellscape <laughs> jeez yeah, that's uh that that would be my my favorite uh uh recent ish. My my favorite horror movie of all time is The Exorcist. Okay. That movie is fucking scary. You want to talk about a movie that holds up? That movie came out in 73. Yeah, something like that. Early 70s. Holy shit. See, that movie is scary see, today. You, you need a second monitor cuz everyone else can see that it came out in 73. Oh. Except you. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't have that page yet. <laughs> my my, yeah. Uh, okay. My as far as more recent movies go, though, The Conjuring. Mm. Have you seen that? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. That movie, it's almost as scary as. Well, it might even be scarier, in fact, than The Exorcist. Hmm. In certain parts, like yeah. I, the Exorcist is still my favorite, and it, it probably overall is is more frightening to me because just because of the child possession element that just that freaks me the hell out. But as far as the the like believability and the the jump out, holy fucking shit! Yeah, um, yeah, The Conjuring is top notch. <laughs> um. One of the movies that that gets me uh, was it The Grudge. Oh, it, it, it was it was a new way of filming it, and of course it was a remake, I believe, of a of a Japanese movie. Okay, whatever. Yeah. The original yeah. movie was still had a, a sense of what in the hell is going on, and kind of you know mm. that that creepiness, and it's been redone so many times, and like you know spoofs and and recreating that same effect and everything else. I mean, none of those ever quite captured that original, mm, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that movie in The Ring, another Japanese remake. Um, yeah, yeah. Both of those movies were just, there, there's something to them that, that really holds true. And, and even though movies after that have tried to recreate that same sense, never quite, yeah. came, never quite came through. There's something about Japanese horror that it just has this element that we don't have in in our movies, you know, of course, like you said, yeah. the, the ring and the grudge, they were remade as American films, but they're based almost, almost word for word in the script on the Japanese movies. Right. So they're Jap they're Japanese stories. Uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that element is that it, it's, it's like a, it's like you have a sense of dread throughout the entire presentation. Both yeah. of those movies have that. And I've seen a couple other Japanese horror movies that aren't coming to mind, and they're the exact same way. It's just yeah. You just feel like shit while you're watching it. You're just like, oh, I, my God. I saw, I saw one that uh, <laughs> uh, I watched it when I was deployed, and I don't remember what the name of it was, but this this girl, I don't, it's so hard to explain. Like Japanese cinema is just different. It is. And and the way that they do their horror movies, it lends itself very heavily to the Japanese style. 
And I, I can understand why it's so hard to recreate that with American style. Um, but yeah, absolutely frightening. Like they, there's no holes barred on that kind of stuff. It's like, you know what? We're, we're just going to scare the shit out of you. And if you piss yourself in the theater, we'll just wa wash it away. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, we don't care. Yeah. Um, that's true. Mama Collins in the chat room has mentioned uh, sinister. Yeah. And... That I had not seen yet. Oh, really? Oh yeah. yeah. That's see, see, th this is the problem here. We, we need to create a, another channel of just of us watching these movies. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Sinister was a, another one that was, th there was something there the entire time and you weren't quite sure what it was. And as it unraveled, it, it instead of like un the, the story, like showing you what's going on and you removing yourself from it so you can actually observe, it was another one that as it came through and, and, and the horror came to fruition, you got sucked more and more into it. And mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah, that's that's one that my wife won't watch. <laughs> <laughs> like she she hasn't finished it and she never will <laughs> oh my god yeah see that's so. that's kind of the problem that i have stephanie is not a horror fan hmm. she's kind of been dipping her toes in into the waters like she she watched children in the corn with me she watched halloween with me mm -hmm. uh see what else has she watched um scream scream uh, for for as silly as that movie was when it came out and as teen based as it was when it came out there's still a couple jump scares in there that, that screw me up every time I, I watch it. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I just rewatched that. Probably within the last year, I rewatched the entire Scream series. It totally holds up. I mean, it's yeah. 80s -ish, or uh, I'm sorry, 90s is shit, but yeah. it still holds up. It's, and, and it's a very well done movie. Matthew series. Lillard in that movie is amazing. Like, <laughs> he is such a goofy actor and he's typecasted as these goofy characters, but he does it so well. And it's, he's got a very subtle art of acting into it but yeah, the, those, yeah those but the, all the, like the first what first three screen movies the 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 good ones <laughs> <laughs> right yeah the, the fourth one was two. kind of a parody of itself which is yeah which is uh, itself, was it, was, which the series itself is a parody of horror movies horror. in general yeah though the genre itself right um <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah I, I still i still i mean if those movies come on i'll still watch them yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, they're not good. the least of which I, was it. Nave Campbell is in it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just saying, I was a Party <laughs> Five fan. All right, um, I'm going to go down this list and look at a couple others. Uh, the Blair Witch Project. I thought that movie was awesome. The well, Scream's the next one in here, actually. Um, I thought the Blair Witch Project was awesome. I didn't. It wasn't overly scary to me, but I, I thought at the time, the POV aspect of that movie was yeah, very. The, 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 the it added something that, something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It there it added something that I hadn't seen before and, and you know right, that exactly that enhanced the experience of it. It's not something I could watch over and over again though. It's it's kind of no. one and done. Um right. but I thought that was great. Uh The Fly from nineteen eighty six. I don't know. I, I think that's more of a sci fi movie, just like uh probably some people think of Alien. But Right. Um, it still has an aspect to it that's like what sure. what in the hell you know even though that that story is laid out to you like as it goes along but sure yeah um Rose what about Ma Tucker and Tucker and Dale versus Evil have you seen that I have not that movie is amazing <laughs> it is kind of a parody of horror movies because you get to see the opposite angle because the, the so-called killer like the hillbilly killers they're not actually killers. They're just a couple of of couple of redneck buddies that are trying to spend their vacation out in the woods, and these dumbass college kids come to their swamp and start offing themselves <laughs> by just their their jackassery, <laughs> and they think that the hillbillies are doing it, and oh, it's just it's it's hilarious. Uh, it is way more comedy than it is horror. I'll, I'll have to watch that. Yeah, funny. it is fantastic. Um, Rosemary's Baby was another one that was kind of freaky, again, with the the whole child aspect of it. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and it's not even a horror movie. It, it, I don't even know if it belongs on this list, but I can see why it would, because it's a zombie flick. Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> oh that, that's, a great movie. Like, that's a great movie. <laughs> I can watch that. I can watch that movie from from beginning to end over and over again, and I'm gonna yeah. laugh every time. It's just so yep. 
Yep. Just so put it funny. on repeat. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh Poltergeist. That movie scared the shit out of me as a kid. Yeah. Actually, I think it scared me as an adult as well. <laughs> it's pretty good. The, that movie not was seen... my introduction into why graveyards are bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, I never thought graveyards were anything besides graveyards until that movie. Yeah, especially if there's Native American remains. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I have not yet seen the remake. Have you um, seen that? I, uh, yes, not, yes, I did. This, I did. This year, and this it year was, or last year? Yeah, I did see it, and it was so awesome that I forgot about it. Um, <laughs> Seven is on here on this list from 1995. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call that horror. That's absolutely suspense thriller. To me. Yeah, I, I would go suspense th thriller on that. Um, yeah, and Saw, of course, is uh, well, it's 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 gore and it's it's suspense gore porn. Thrill. Yeah, yeah, it's total gore, gore porn, and it's it's a lot of suspense. I, horror, it's pushing the it's pushing the line. Now, some of the later ones did. I, I thought took more of the horror aspect of it, but overall, I mean, if you're gonna have categories, those it's it's gore porn. All those are gore porn. Yeah, I, I think I only saw the first three. I, I really enjoyed the first two. The third one, I believe it was, really turned me off from the series, and then I didn't watch any of the others. I heard it got better. I heard it got better, but I I still didn't revisit it. It yeah, it, there's definitely a bell curve there where it went up in quality and then it came down in story. Like, uh, <laughs> so yeah. um, the if you caught the the middle couple there, they were pretty good. Uh, if you're into gore porn, um, which right. you know some of us are. Uh, a mo one movie that I didn't see in here. Let's see, Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods is on here, and I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see if I can see it real quick. And I'm not seeing it. There's one that was redone. Ah, uh, shit. Texas Chainsaw Massacre? No. That yeah, that that was I don't know. Um <laughs> or What, what about the, the Hills Have Eyes? <sighs> Never really scared me. <laughs> that movie's fucked up. Well, I, I tell you it what, it disturbed me, but it didn't me. scare me at all. Come visit me here in New Mexico, <laughs> and look around and think about that movie, and I bet your fear level will increase. In, in February, I'm driving my mom from uh, from Texas to California, so <clears throat> yeah, that'll be perfect time to think about that movie. There you go. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, speaking of movies, man, uh, the new Star Wars trailer came out during our little week break. Yeah, shit, yeah, um, yeah, and that, that's that's the main reason that I was disappointed we didn't do a show last week because we're not timely anymore. Uh, <laughs> not that we would have been that timely anyway, because everybody and their fucking brother was covering that. Yeah, um, yeah, man. What what did you think of that trailer? Um, initial thought. I was eight years old. Again. Okay. Like every time I see any of this new Star Wars stuff, it takes me back to being eight years old in a way that the the prequels did not. Um and and, right. and, and see I consumed it in mass. Like I watched the trailer and then I watched the two teasers and then I watched the Korean trailer, which actually includes the two teasers, and then <sighs> I watched the interviews, and then I watched the 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 Com New York Comic Con or whatever it was, Star Wars Adventure or whatever. Like I watched, I, I probably watched three hours of video. I watched more YouTube than there's going to be movie as a result oh, from shit. that trailer. So I don't know. You tell me how did I, how did I feel? What did I feel? <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Well, let me tell you my experience. Okay. So the release of that trailer was a big deal because they were doing it during Monday Night Football during the halftime show. Hmm. I don't have cable. I don't either. And, and unless you pay about $7,000 a game, you can't stream NFL. Uh, so anyway, I went to Chili's with my family and we were eating dinner and the football game was playing. Of course. And so the first time that I saw that trailer was without sound in a noisy restaurant. 
And I, I totally thought the three the trailer was going to come on and somebody at Chili's was going to switch the channel to something else. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, for, well, for what it's worth, I was I was here in uh, in Korea, and we were going to watch it on AFN. We had a little pool going to see if AFN was going to show the trailer or think it was commercial and bleep it out. Um, and unfortunately I didn't get to find out which one of those was true because we ended up doing a dry run for the presentation we had that following Friday. So uh, I was sitting in the theater, sweating my butt off after having given my, my 10 minutes of presentation, waiting for the other two hours of presentation to conclude so we could be critiqued by all the people that were steering us wrong. <laughs> Wonderful. So anyway, back to Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my first impression wasn't really an impression because I didn't get to really experience the trailer. My second impression was on my iPhone, and that wasn't much better. I was disappointed with the trailer on my initial viewings. It's because you needed to, need to watch it on iPhone 6S Plus. Yeah, well, so <laughs> moving right past that... <laughs> I was disappointed, and this is why. Okay. The, the the two teasers were exciting as shit from start to finish. Like, I would get chills up and down, goosebumps, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hair on the back of my neck, the whole, the whole nine, start to finish on those teasers. So I think I was accustomed to that. And when I watched the full-length trailer... It wasn't really much of that. It was a it was a little more of a sublime experience. I think what it was is I wasn't. I don't know. I didn't experience it correctly. So what what I ended up doing. Uh, sometime a, a couple days after the trailer was released, I redid the audio setup in my living room, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this right." So. I watched the first teaser with the sound fucking absolutely cranked in my mm -hmm. living room. Chills. Going crazy. Watched the second teaser. Fucking hair standing up crazy as shit, especially the Chewy We're Home thing at the end. Right, right. And then I watched the full-length trailer and it happened fucking hair standing up on my arms fucking total chills man i so it wasn't, I got, it wasn't a matter of the the pilot or the not the pilot the uh the trailer itself is it a matter of your level of immersion that's i think that's exactly what it was that movie sound is so important to star wars mm. people dismiss that try to watch star wars on mute Okay, all right, whatever. You can do that, right? <laughs> now, put on the Star Wars soundtrack without watching it. What's a what's a richer experience? Right. Yeah, the the, the sound of Star Wars is is so fucking important. I had such a different experience when I had proper sound for that trailer. Like that trailer is a fucking work of art so many emotions are experienced when you watch that trailer properly when i watched it improperly i just had this like eh. <laughs> eh. okay all right whatever i'm still gonna see the movie but fuck <laughs> you know but when you watch it when you watch it properly it's oh it's so good it is such a good trailer okay so beyond initial impressions what are your thoughts? What do you think? Like plot, plot wise. What, 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 what are your theories? What do, what do you, what's going through your head? Um. Because the trailers don't tell shit. No. There's not. But in in doing my research and reading about the trailers oh, like that, oh, oh. I've seen some summaries of what oh, many stay people, away. what many people think might be going on, and while I don't. I don't 
like I didn't sit there and read them, but I saw enough of them uh, through my scrolling that uh, you know you you catch certain little phrases and this and that, and I've completely stayed away from all things Star Wars since then, and I don't want to say what I think because it might be tainted by some of the things that I that I read. Okay, all right. Well, so. I'll I'll only because I, I've been trying to stay away from all that sort of stuff, but I will I will address one thing that is a thought. Where the fuck is Luke Skywalker? He's not in the movie poster. He's not in the trailers, other than his, his voice is in the second teaser. And I think we're seeing his arm in one of the teasers. In the, actually, it was in the second teaser. And I think it's also in the, in the full-length trailer. Where the fuck is Luke Skywalker? So th- there's a lot of theories that, that go through my head that, okay, he's dead. He's just a, he's an Obi-Wan Kenobi um, you know, I can spirit form uh, there. I'm thinking that maybe he's doing like a Jedi master meditation somewhere, maybe on Dagobah and he's going to show up at the, the end of the movie. Another thought is that maybe he's turned to the dark side and yeah, I don't know. It's what I love about these trailers is that they don't tell you shit yep it, it gives you a basic uh, impression of what's going on with the movie like that there's action and that there's different environments things like that but it doesn't really give you the plot at all right and the beautiful thing is you can come up with a million different theories and nothing in the trailers contradicts any of them right and it's fucking beautiful i i i don't think we will see very much mark hamill in this movie I don't think Harrison Ford will be seen in the in episodes two or three, and um, I you mean th- you mean eight and nine? Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't. Uh, uh, I think that. You know, speaking of Harrison Ford, the Han Solo character, you know he's no longer a space atheist, right? Uh huh. In the in the original trilogy, he was a, a total skeptic when it came to the Force. Right. It's like I don't believe in any all powerful force controlling everything. And he's right. just total total dick about it. Well, in the trailer, he was like, "It's true, all of it, the dark side, and the Jedi." It's all true. Yeah, so he's no longer an atheist. <laughs> I yeah, I I, uh, <laughs> I think I think Luke has gone out to find um remnants of the old Jedi that he's gone on like a personal quest with the Force and I don't think he's going to be in very much of this movie. I think the main villain in this movie is is very is going to be very pronounced and after some specific items or or you know specific things and that's where the conflict is going to is going to circle around and i think that uh your dogs agree with me um, i was getting ready to say i think my dogs disagree <laughs> um yeah i i just i you know i i but if you ask me like three days from now, I'll have a completely different idea of what I think the movies are going to have. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I just, I just want to watch the fucking movie already. Yeah, exactly. December 18th. Why the fuck is it not December 18th yet? (laughs) (laughs) Yep. All right. So, um, a couple of things happened this, this last week. Yeah. Uh, let me say real quick. Okay. mm -hmm. Because the one thing that I wanted to talk about is YouTube red. Yeah. Okay. So real quick, just for those that don't know, it's going to be the YouTube pay service, the subscription service, that is basically going to be, you know, if you become a subscriber, what is it, 10 bucks a month or something like that? Nine ninety nine. Yeah. You, uh, you get YouTube ad-free. And YouTube music. Right. And you get exclusive content, like they're talking about original programming and certain right. channels are going to become subscriber-specific and stuff like that. But the main thing that I wanted to talk about is that they called it YouTube Red. 
Why in God's fucking name did they call it YouTube Red? Because the first thing I thought of when I heard that name is Red Tube. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> if you don't know what Red Tube is, don't go there. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> it is a pornographic website. Uh, um, filled by supposed user submissions. Um, I actually thought of something completely different. I saw YouTube Red and I was thinking, oh, this is like one of those AIDS benefit things. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But either way, I didn't think, oh, paid subscription for YouTube. Right. Why so, the fuck did they choose that name? I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It could have been YouTube Plus. It could have been... Yeah. Oh. Pay tube, you know, it could have been <laughs> there's there's a million different things that it could have been, but YouTube Red makes zero sense and I'm not gonna subscribe anyway because I don't care about getting PewDiePie videos three days early. Right. End of story. Exactly. Yeah. There, I'm, there's I'm not... far too much free entertainment out there to try to cornhole me into paying for some shit. You know, I pay the same way I expect our our listeners or viewers to to, to pay. By continuing the feed of of creative projects on the inter internet, uh, throw in some some PayPal or uh, or um, Patreon money at people that you really like and that you really appreciate, or Absolutely. just using the links that they have to buy the stuff that you you know that you would normally buy anyway. Um, but yeah, I I, I don't see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, Which, by the way. If anyone wants to support us, they can just go to ritualmisery.com and click on support and see all of our ways. All of them, yep. All of them. All of them. Amazon, uh, the Apple Store. Uh, Patreon. Patreon, PayPal. PayPal. There's yeah. there's tons of ways to help us out. Or just be, be like Sergeant Muffin in the chat room and have a kick-ass thing that you just share with people and allow them to use. Exactly. Um, yep. So there's that. Um, <laughs> in fact, if you want to go and help that out, it's uh, patreon.com forward slash Sergeant Muffin. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I don't, I don't, I'm with you. I don't understand. I think there's, it, it's just shitty. So uh, uh, reversing course from things that are really shitty, <laughs> Apple had some meetings with the government last week and basically they said that they cannot and even if they could, they will not release uh, uh, people's information from their iPhones uh, if it's encrypted and they will not put a backdoor into new iPhones. So before I get into my two thoughts, what are your two thoughts? I think that's great. I've kind of, I've kind of been in this weird in-between thing when it comes to privacy laws and uh, you know people getting their, their panties in a bunch about about things like this because part of me is thinking well what the fuck are you hiding if you know if you're not fucking up then why do you care right but then there's another part of me that you know i i think we should respect people's privacy because in this country even if you are committing crimes you are innocent until you're proven guilty we have laws in place that uh you know there's unlawful uh uh search and seizure uh with you know without probable cause there's all these things but but the government keeps trying to to make back doors and skirt around laws so that they can search not necessarily seize but search um you know by by uh you know being able to monitor our uh, digital transmissions or our phone calls or what have you. And yeah, that's just not right. It's just not right. Regardless if you have something to hide or not, it's just not right that someone can just eavesdrop into your business when right. you know, they don't need to be there. Um, my two thoughts on this are one, it's good to see a company, especially a company that I use a lot of products from uh, flat out saying no even if it's only publicly and they're, they're secretly doing backdoors or the, you know, whatever. 
uh, the public persona of saying, no, we're not going to do that. You know, that's, that's reassuring in some ways. And mm-hmm. the other thought on my other thought on the subject is every bit of encryption that we have is crackable. Nothing is uncrackable. Sure. Um, and yet we still have things like in the air force a couple weeks ago, uh, down at, was it Laughlin air force base? One of the, one of the commanding officers ordered some people to show them his, their text, text messages or whatever. And a whole bunch of people got in trouble for private communications because they were unprofessional in, in nature between two people having private conversations on their personal devices, mm. completely unrelated to what else was going on. You know, like, there's no end to what people will do to get you into a situation you can't get out of if it helps them out. So let's, let's, I, I welcome every possible uh, trap door available as long as there's no back door. So that's, that, those, those are my thoughts. I, I think there's, right. there's plenty of ways to skirt around shit and get things anyway. Let's, let's not make it any easier for people. Right, right. Yes, yes. All right. Agreed. Um, okay, so uh, so unless you have anything else, I have one thing that I want to share that I ran across this week while watching um, while watching some YouTube videos, or not YouTube, uh, some TED Talks. One of them was about beheadings and how popular they are in this and that, and I was like, well, I'm, I've never seen a link to a beheading or whatever else. So I did a quick search, mm. and... <laughs> I came up with this and it's not directly related to uh, the beheadings themselves. It's more of a reactionary piece. I'm going to throw it up here so people can see. It's not overly graphic, so I don't think anybody's going to get offended by that. Um, It is essentially this picture. This video shows... um, Shows a kid supposedly beheading an, you know, a, in, a kid in ISIS supposedly beheading this dude. Uh, whatever. I didn't watch the video. I'm not going to. Um, and you see that the link is very small, so I'm not trying to get pe- more people to watch. But this is the site giving the information, showing where you can find this particular video. And this is what I want to show you right here. Here, let me, let me scroll down here. They're going to give you the link and then t- call you sick fucking assholes. Skip to 4.15 to see the action. So you're criticizing people showing the videos and recording the videos and doing the beheadings. But then you're going to give me a shortcut to tell me exactly how far into the video I need to go in order to watch the actual beheading. Like, right, right, right. This is the mindset of these people that do this kind of shit. There should be some sort of, of filter on the internet that just slaps people when they're stupid. Because <laughs> whoever posted this would just, st- we, they would still be getting slapped right now. It would just con- continue to happen. They'd still be getting slapped. Stupid yeah, that's... shit, man. Like, if you're uh, just, that, that just, it pissed me off. Like, I, and that was like the first thing I came to when I searched searched it out it was idiots complete fucking idiots god i shit like yeah. that blows me away so that's, that's, all, <laughs> that's all i wanted to say about that is you know uh, th- that was one of the things that i watched some t- some ted talks and that came up and i did a little research because i thought well this is something that i'm obviously not part of let's see how prolific it actually is and it may be the first link that i went to had that and i was just like okay these are idiots i'm fucking leaving yeah, I, I can. Um, yeah, I can say I have absolutely no desire to watch uh, beheadings. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't even want to watch uh, Saddam Hussein hang. You know, and I, yeah, I, I, I almost I had a vested did, interest I in did, that. You know. Yeah, I did actually see that video. When yeah. It came. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. That's. I, I felt like a, I felt like an asshole for having watched it right after I watched it. <laughs> but you still watched it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. All right, man. You got anything else for this week? No, nah, man. Um, I will say that if you're a beer guy like me, you should go to ratebeer.com. 
And once you're at RayBeer.com, you should look up username Del Noche, and you can see all the beers that I've been reviewing. Oh, that, that's what happens, huh? Yeah. All right. And even if you're not a beer guy, you should at least follow me on Twitter. It's at RM underscore Del Noche. Very good. Um, uh, I am at Ethan Kane on Twitter. Uh, you can, if you really want to support the show, the best way you can support it is to go on iTunes and rate it and share it. We will be on the YouTube, the, the Google play, whatever thing we've already gotten approval. So we're just waiting for it to go live. If it hasn't already, I'm I've been so out of it. it, it yeah. It, it's probably up there already. Um, but, uh, yeah, we really appreciate you, uh, stopping by listening and watching and, uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas in our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. That's where we got uh, the main topic for today. And you can email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. Of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Um... Kevin McLeod made our theme music, and we appreciate uh, him letting us use it. And I need to... <laughs> a little behind-the-scenes stuff right there. Um, thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this is your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> All right, that's probably enough time for the music that we can't hear to have played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be the next thing we have to figure out.